Hello, Pastor Deborah here of the Hidden Kingdoms channel here on YouTube. I've got a new word of encouragement video for you. It is entitled, Which Lord is Your Lord? But before I get into that, I want to tell you a true and personal story that I participated in and was a part of and helping a precious young lady named Candy find her true Lord and help her deep on the inside with her spirit to give way to a new Lord instead of the dark Lord she had been serving named Satan. This is about her deep on the inside and how her little spirit, at even three years old, when she was just a child, created a protector, sort of a lord, to watch over her. His name was James. Let me tell you her story. The story is called James the Protector. It's going to help you to understand this, this video of a word of encouragement. I'm going to read it to you, so in case you see my head looking down, you'll know why. Let's get started. James the Protector. This story is one of deliverance, freedom, and healing. Freedom from Satan's control was going to be broken. And there was going to be made a way for more of the Lord Christ Jesus in Candy's life. She was already a believer in him and had accepted his love and joy and happiness into her life. But her spirit was very skeptical of him. And that is a, this story is about this is just one of my many spiritual stories with this young mother of three precious children who were all raised in multi-generational Satanism, a satanic family for generations after generations. Candy was a queen to be. When I met her, she was on a year sabbatical. Her father had just passed away, and she was to marry a king. Her family sat in the first place of the 13 bloodlines of the brotherhood. She was to be the mother, give birth, that would eventually bring forth the Antichrist spirit into the world. I did not know that when I met Candy. But I learned it as I got to know her. Candy would call me each night and we would do deliverance on the phone. Most nights she wasn't there. She was out in a trance, fearful, knocked out, so that her spirit could not hear or participate. But because early on in our relationship, Candy gave me permission to help her become healed, delivered, and freed from all of Satan and everything he had done to her and through that family, through her ex-husband. She wanted to be free. So as I and her always did each night was to talk on the phone for hours and hours and hours. I was doing ministry deep in the spiritual realm with Candy. We were con I was doing spiritual ministry called deliverance, providing freedom and healing of the Most High God, the Father of Christ Jesus, and now the Father of Candy who would set this spiritual captive free. So this night, 
she brought to me one of her personalities, her parts, her alters from a life of abuse and disassociation. His name was James. He was a young teenage boy who was her spiritual protector. He was created by Candy, by her own thoughts, her own spirit, to help her when she was a very small child of about three years old. When I spiritually met James on the phone, by the spiritual gift of discerning of spirits, by the operation of the Holy Spirit to me. I had spiritual ministry to do to help set the spirit part of candy free to bring deliverance and healing. Well, he would come up and he spoke to me and said to me that this Jesus was not capable or strong enough to even protect this lady 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as he had been doing all of her life. Candy created James through disassociation when she was about three. He was on call for her spirit 24-7 so she could rest and feel safe. I asked him if he personally knew this Jesus, and he said no. But he, now you must remember, when I'm talking to Candy, but I'm talking to James at the same time, Candy sort of knocked out in a trance. But it is her voice that is the voice of James. I had to know this. I had already studied this, and God was entrusting this precious spiritual being named Candy to me on the phone. I rarely saw her in her house or in person. I didn't go over and eat with her, she asked me. I took her to church once, but her, her demonic spirits manifested and we had to leave. She wasn't ready. She needed lots and lots of deliverance and freedom. But he, James, was the only one, he said, who could and would protect this lady, this child. Nobody else could, as he has been doing and will be doing for the rest of her life. And I said to James, I bet you are very tired being on call 24-7 for her. And James said to me, yes, he was tired, but he had to do this. This was his job. I said, I know how tired you must be. And wouldn't you like a rest? And he said to me, Yes, he would. But only he could protect her. No one else is qualified, strong enough, and would be on call 24-7. I said to James, Would it be okay if he allowed, if he allowed Christ Jesus who Candy believed in, to take his place for 24 hours so he could determine if Jesus maybe could relieve him and he could go off and rest. And James said back to me, I do not know if Jesus would be strong enough to do this. I said to James, Maybe he could ask this young lady if she would be okay with him taking 
a rest and allow this Christ Jesus to do his job. So off he went spiritually and asked the core personality, the person, the little child of this young lady, if she was okay if James took a rest for a day and allowed Jesus to see if he can do the job of protecting her And she said it would be okay with her. I always respected the core personality. I always had all the parts go ask Candy for permission. What you must understand when you're helping people, doing deliverance, spiritual work, or even what you might call mental health therapy, counseling, you must have the person's permission to go deep on the inside. So off James went, got quiet on the phone. James went and asked Candy, the little girl, if Christ Jesus could take his place for just 24 hours. And Candy said yes. So James came back to me and said, Candy said it would be okay. We'll give it a try for 24 hours. So I prayed. Prayers are always a big part of helping people. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you come and take James's place as this precious young lady's spiritual protector and prove yourself, your glory, your word, your agape love, to this mother of three, to James, and to all those who are listening and watching spiritually. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Anytime I'm on the phone doing prayers, I would have millions, if not billions of other people listening, watching from a distance what I was doing was always aware that I was not alone with just one person. So Christ Jesus came and James went and took a rest. But he was watching. Candy had given permission. Remember, James is a part of Candy. Candy created James when she was three. He was a teenager, maybe 17, to be her protector so her little spirit could rest, knowing that she had a powerful young man protecting her. He was faithful, but it was really Candy herself doing self-protection. You see, you have to spiritually understand that James is a spiritually created person, protector, by this precious lady named Candy, who was always there watching and fighting, protecting and shielding and guarding the core of this spiritual person, this child. But now, since she became saved, meaning believing in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and became born again in her mind. Candy and God were working to bring deep deliverance and healing. Candy believed that Jesus was real now and had risen out of the tomb. She had lived in a world of dark spiritual beings, demonic spirits, evil, hate, murder, sacrifice. She was looking for happiness, and she saw it in a lady's eyes. She knew she didn't have it. I was called in to call her and get her saved. It was easy. She was ready. She wanted that happiness. I said, I don't have it, but I know someone who can give it to you. Christ Jesus. I asked her if she wanted it. She said yes. So I prayed. 
Prayer is a big part of helping people because I'm asking God to come and do what he can do and what no one else can do. And in this instance, after that prayer, Christ Jesus, the Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, the Living Word, would come and be her protector, her guard. James, as I told you, was created by Candy when she was three. He had been spiritually protecting her, watching out for her from danger. But yet James was a part of Candy. It was as if Candy was doing self-protection for herself to survive. She had learned nobody else would care. Not her mother, her father, nobody. There was nobody she could call on but herself. So she created a part. So Candy herself was providing her own self-protection through James. So now in this spiritual experience, the core personality had to give herself permission to allow her own self, her own protector, her guard, her shield, James, who she had trusted her whole life since she was three, to take a rest and allow this Christ Jesus to take James's place. This was a big decision for Candy. She had been self-protecting herself spiritually, been using energy, her own spirit, through disassociation. So I knew Candy's core personality had to give permission to take a rest so Christ Jesus could step in and prove to Candy's core that he was qualified to be her guard, her protection. The core personality of Candy had to give herself permission to do Candy's job within her spirit of a spiritual protector. So for 24 hours, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the Heavenly Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, was this spiritual child's spiritual protector. The next day, I asked James if Jesus did okay. Did he seem to be strong enough to protect this spiritual child? I'm really asking Candy herself, through James, this question. And James said, Yeah, he seemed to be strong enough. He did pretty well. I asked James, What does this young mother think about Jesus? and his protecting her. James said, she said he did okay. She felt safe and protected. That was Candy's core, saying he did okay. So I said to James, would he, James, like to take a long rest from his job of spiritually protecting this spiritual child. And would the spiritual child, Candy, allow Jesus to take his place, James's, so he could rest? I was asking Candy, could she give up James, her own self-protection, and allow this Jesus, who she barely met, to take James's place. And she didn't have to do self-protection through James anymore. And James said back to me, yes, it's okay with her too. If Jesus really wants to take over this 24-7 
for her protection. I knew I had to have the core personalities, permission, and James. Candy was taking a big step. She was now about 33 years old. She had been protecting herself through James for 30 years, earthly years. And now she was willing to give it up, give up her own self-protection and trust a stranger she barely knew. So I prayed again. Dear Father, this sweet young man, I always had respect for the disassociative parts, for they were all created by the core personality. This sweet young man, James, said he's ready to take a well needed rest from protecting this precious spiritual child. Remember, James is a part of Candy, was created by Candy, is Candy. So I'm really praying to Father for Candy and about Candy. And allow Jesus to take his place in her spiritual life. So, Father, I ask that you free and deliver this sweet, precious child, James, to rest from his duties of being the spiritual protector. And place Jesus Christ in his place so the spiritual protection continues and James can finally be at rest and peace. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. And so the spiritual switch was made. You see, when this precious young lady, Candy, was small, about three years old, she needed a self-protector, a guard. No one else could help her, so she had to protect herself through creation, through her spirit, through her own will and thoughts. She created James. But as time went by and she became saved by her belief in the life, the death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus. Jesus was not able to become her spiritual protection, her shield, her watchman, her guard, because that spiritual responsibility was James, her own self-created spiritual being. So there was no spiritual place for Jesus until both the core personality and James freely and willingly allowed Christ Jesus to become the only spiritual protector, shield, watchman, and guard of Candy's spirit. For this newly born-again spiritual child of God, the Most High, now Jesus Christ could take up his rightful spiritual place in Candy's spiritual life, in her heart, and in her mind. The little three-year-old child could now rest, could be at peace and feel safe from protecting herself through James. Through Candy's willing heart and mind to have more of Jesus Christ in her life, to be free from Satanism and all that was created in her life and to have some well-needed rest and peace. You see, when Candy exerted herself to create James, she was using spiritual energy and even her life to protect herself. 
She would get tired easily. And that tiredness would relate to her physical body. And she had three children, a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-year-old to care for. To care for. She had a mother who was living. She had a sister and a brother. They were all in Satanism. I met Candy, as I said, during her sabbatical from Satanism. She had a year off. When the year was up, she was to get remarried to a powerful king, a Jewish man who was a teacher. And they were to bring forth children. And through them would eventually come the generations that would lead up to the Antichrist. Candy said in the number one position, the number one queen of all the clans, all the brotherhood of the 13 tribes around the international Illuminati's brotherhood. This was deep, deep spiritual stuff I knew nothing about when I got started. Through Candy's willing heart to be free, and delivered, and to get more of this Christ Jesus in her life. She knew about that she needed spiritual protection. The world she still lived in spiritually was horrible. Demonic spirits, death, screams, horror, torture, flames. And she needed protection from torture and abuse. So God answered Candy's prayer that I prayed. And God the Heavenly Father was spiritually becoming more and more real to Candy. And many, many unsaved human spirits watched, heard the prayers, saw this transition, saw this deliverance, and saw Christ Jesus, as you see from this Pixabay motion video come into Candy and become her shield and protector. His rightful place as king and warrior, as guard and guardian of her spirit. Copy love was at work and came to, and many came to believe themselves in this spiritual protector, this shield, this watchman, this king, this warrior called Christ Jesus. Yes, Christ Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God who died on a cross but rose from the tomb three days later. And he comes down like this into our dreams. He comes and visits us, talks with us, wants to have a relationship with us spiritually. And I asked Candy how he was doing and how he was going to become a part of her. And she said it was wonderful. She felt at peace. She had more energy. She could sleep and rest knowing that Christ Jesus was there just like James was. She had put her trust in somebody else who she barely knew instead of herself. What great love and victories God can do in your life as well. Now let's get to the word of encouragement. This is a word of encouragement that's going to, that you will understand because of the story called James the Protector. My question to you on this word of encouragement is which Lord is your Lord? And it's going to come out of the authorized King James Bible. Out of Psalms 18, 1 through 3. Psalms was written by King David, the second king of ancient Israel. King Saul was the first 
The third was King Solomon, David's son from Bathsheba. But first, let's open up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for telling us the story of Candy and James, her protector, and how he gave, she gave way and gave her permission to have a new Lord, a new guard, a warrior, a king, a mighty protector instead of herself. Father, we thank you that all those that watch this and hear this, they too will help themselves and allow Christ Jesus to become their Lord, that means owner, their Savior, their King, their warrior, their guard, their protector, as Candy did. And she allowed herself to step down from that place and James could take a rest. We thank you, Lord, for these true stories of people that I was involved with and still am, even to this day. We thank you now as you help us to understand your word, your life and our lives, and how you desire to be our Lord. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, Psalms 18, 1 through 3, verse 1. This is King David now. I will spiritually love you, O Lord, my spiritual strength. Andy found that out. You don't have to do this in your own strength. You can't. God says, I will take that place. I will give you my strength, my life. I will give you my protection. Verse 2. The Lord of Israel. The word Israel means, means prince, means our spirit. I know there's an Israel in the earthly world, but it represents our spirit. That is to be, and Israel is a prince. That's what the word means. The Lord of Israel. The God of King David is my spiritual rock, my foundation, and my spiritual fortress, and my spiritual deliverer from my spiritual enemies, from death, from ignorance, from sin, and the grave. Candy found him, invited him in, and then took another step to allow him to be her protector, spiritually. My God, my spiritual strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, that which holds me together, in the horn, the instrument, the voice of my spiritual salvation, and my high tower my place of glory. David is telling us that the Lord God of Israel is his Lord. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord, my God, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Can you say that about Christ Jesus in your life? Can you allow him to take the place of your spiritual protector like Candy did? Oh, I know you've all got disassociative parts. Everybody does. I know you've left your body. And you leave it all the time. I'm currently working with people all over the world. Helping them to spiritually find what Candy found. To help teach their spirit to love it. And to help their soul understand. Our soul is our helpmate of our spirit. It is to relate 
spiritual things, knowledge, truth, light, love, freedom, deliverance from the spirit, out through the soul, our words, our actions, and out through our physical body. We are three, a spirit that's eternal, a soul that's our mind right here, with our thoughts and imaginations, our biochemistry from our biological body. And we are a body of dirt. The spirits to be the king of this kingdom, this territory. But it's to be submitted to this Lord that King David was submitted to. It is a child of the king of heaven. And it is to be protected to be learned, to be taught, to be free, so that the spirit, as Candy learn, can rest. So which Lord is your Lord? Candy found him. Pastor Deborah found him. And many others have found him and are still finding him. Just as this Pixabay motion video, God's light and love and Wisdom and knowledge and truth and freedom, protection is wanting to come down into your spiritual life and fill you, guard you and protect you as it did candy. So if you want what candy found, you can have him. It's free. Cost you nothing. All the attacks will come. You will feel different spiritually. There'll be a joy in you and a peace you will never quite understand. Your soul then will get the benefits of your spiritual peace and what you do. Your soul will be at peace and feel safe no matter what happens. Your physical body will find healing and rest from all the weary of the fear that it goes through. Because of your soul, Candy's life was changed, and so can yours. Well, that's my word of encouragement to you. Ask yourself, which Lord is your Lord? Do you have the Lord that Candy has? Do you have the Lord that King David has? And Pastor Deborah, if you don't, you can have him. He is free. He is waiting to come down like this and shine His glory into you. Fill your spirit with the colors of the rainbow, with light, knowledge, truth, gapy love, mercy, peace, and blessings. So if you want it, you can have it. Just say yes, that's all Candy did. And what you've been looking for has come. It's not it far from you. It never is. It's waiting. You must give it permission to enter your life spiritually. Then your spirit will grow after it nurses on agape love for a long time. Then that agape love, peace, and joy will filter out to your soul. And your soul will feel the love and peace and joy. It's never felt before. It's not an earthly love. It's not a sexual love. It's a spiritual love of a father and a mother. And Pastor Deborah will be right there as your spiritual mother, helping you to understand and be there. You can come and sit in my lap, lay in my lap. I'm there to teach you about a new kingdom, a new father and family that you have not known to show you the power of a God be loved like I did Candy. Candy's doing well these days. After two or three years on the phone every night, she was able to be passed on to a wonderful couple who took her into church. She started becoming an evangelist, telling her story. But we had to get a lot of spiritual deliverance done. And we did that right on the phone every single night. Many nights she was passed out. But I did the work. 
and she became free. Her kids are grown now, probably married. She's probably a grandmother. That was years ago. Right on the phone, many other people would stand off at a distance, spiritually, listen and watch every night as we talked. Oh, some nights were battles. Some of them were tough, some were easy. But freedom was on its way through deliverance, and then could come the healing. And Christ Jesus could take his rightful place as your protector, your guard, your watchman, your king, your Lord, as King David. And that is your word of encouragement for this week. I'll see you next time. Bye.